I'm Roy Lee Lindsay with the North Carolina Pork Council, and I want everyone to remember, bacon makes everything better. Hi everybody, welcome back to the David Glenn Show, now seen and heard exclusively here on the North Carolina Sports Network. Our next guest first became a big name on the sports scene here in North Carolina more than 20 years ago when he was a prep star at West Charlotte High School and later Oak Hill Academy in Virginia. Justin Gray then went on to become a three-time All-ACC player and a three-time NCAA tournament participant for Coach Skip Prosser during his four years at Wake Forest University. And two of those seasons, he spent alongside another legendary Demon Deacons guard, a guy named Chris Paul. After more than a decade playing professionally all over the world, Justin became a college basketball coach, spending three years on Pat Kelsey's staff at Winthrop. Then in April, 2021, at only 37 years old at the time, Justin was named the head coach at Western Carolina, which was coming off a season with only 11 victories. Over these last three years, Coach Gray has led one of the most dramatic turnarounds in college basketball, from an 11 and 21 record in his first year in Cullowee to 22 wins and counting this season, the most victories the Catamounts have had as a Division I program. As Coach joins us, he and his team are preparing for the Southern Conference Tournament, which will be held at Harris Cherokee Center in Asheville, North Carolina, from this Friday through Monday's championship game. Coach Justin Gray, welcome back to the David Glenn Show. How are you? David, I'm blessed, man. That's a that's a hell of an intro right there, man. Might have to bring you around the Justin Gray basketball camp to do that. Uh, but no. Put you, on my, you put me on your PR staff, Coach. Hey. I got it all locked up and ready to go. <laughs> Uh, here's a, here's the million dollar question for you that everybody wants to know the answer to. How do you go in a three year period from an eleven win season to a school record twenty two victories and counting? Yeah, I think you know the biggest thing is you know having people that believe in me. You know to get the opportunity. You know so we always want to show gratitude and and then it's getting the right people around me staff wise. You know I, I think we have a really really elite staff. Um, good experience. I think everybody's been in a winning program, knows how to win. Um, and then it's the players, you know, you know, Skip Pross used to always have a saying, it's not the X's and the O's, it's the Jimmy and the Joes. And that, that, that hasn't changed at all. And being able to get the right kind of players to sort of believe in the, tr the, uh, the process and trust us. And um, then, then we get out of the way, you know, we let the players be players when it's time to be adjust, make adjustments, we make adjustments. And then um, confidence, man. You know that's that's who I was as a player. You, you know, as a college coach, you have a good have a good feel of what's the standard, and don't let them fall below the standard. But also being able to give them some confidence as well, so they can they can believe in themselves. I'm old enough that I can remember you. I have kind of a mental picture of you as a player for about 20 years, mm -hmm. you know, starting at West Charlotte and all the way through that international career. At what point in that process, coach? During your playing days, did you maybe start thinking just a little bit about one day getting into coaching? And at what point did you get more serious and maybe start taking some details, detailed notes about how you would run your own program if that came to be someday? Yeah, I think I have to give a lot of credit, you know, to to Pat Kelsey. Um, I'm from Charlotte originally, so he was right in Rock Hill. Every year I would come home from 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 playing overseas and take my son to the Pat Kelsey basketball camp and every summer he would ask me like hey man when you ready i got a job for you you know <laughs> and i was like well dude i'm still playing you know I, I really didn't think of it that way and um i think you know once i retired you know i wanted to be a dad you know i wanted to be around my kids and i wanted to be you know do the day-to-day -day things but i understood you know that life has to move on and what's next um i was blessed enough to work at wake you know, for a little bit in a in a, right. in a a development role, you know, just being around the program. And that was a blessing. And I think it was there where I realized, like, man, you know what? I do have something to give back. I I do want to be able to help the next um, student athletes, the, the, the next Justin Gray, the next Chris Paul, the next Teron Downey. Um, like, I wanted to be able to do those things. And, and what better way to be able to be a coach? And 
I was afforded the, the, the opportunity to interview a couple places and, and, and Coach Kelsey took a chance on me. And not only that, he asked me, what did I want to be with it? Like, what do you want to take the career? I said, man, one day I want to have my own program, you know? And he was like, all right, this is what you got to do. And so I would take a little bit of time out sort of plan if I had my own program and I was starting from the ground, what would it look like? And I think, you know, obviously I took things from my playing days in Europe, but, you know, Skip Prosser is a huge, you know, huge, huge um, piece of what we do. Pat Kelsey is a huge, huge thing of what we do. Dino Gaudio, Chris Mack, Jeff Battle, like all those guys, you, you, you hear those names, you're like, man, those are some really, really good coaches. You're like we, we've been blessed to be around them. And it's now it's just, you know, put my own twist on it. You know, and, and being who I am, I can't be any of those guys, just being myself. And again, it goes back to being blessed with the opportunity, you know, and, and, and our AD and Alex Geary and our chancellor, um, Dr. Brown, believing in me. You know, I coached two years now, you know, and they yeah. handed me the kids, the keys to the program. And um, I just really, really believed in, you know, if I didn't know how to do it, I was going to learn how to do it the right way. And, and, and they were on the ride with me. You led me to my next question, as you often do. It's easy for me to see why Coach Kelsey or anybody else would want to be associated with Coach Gray. That, that part's easy. It is harder for me to see, and I've been covering this stuff for 37 years, Coach. Mm -hmm. There are not a lot of guys with two years of experience who get a head coaching opportunity. Yeah. So take, take us back. Was, yeah. was Alex Gary, the guy you mentioned, the Catamounts athletic director, of course, did he see that you were ready to be a head coach? Did he seek you out? Or did you have some convincing to do that you were ready for this task at Western Carolina? Yeah, I think it, it started a little before then. You know, you know, uh, you know, when COVID happened, you know, nobody was really prepared for any of that. And there was uh, a guy that's, that's on my staff there, Jason G. He was at Cincinnati as an associate head coach there. And he started a Zoom, you know, everybody started to Zoom and do, you know, and I wanted to learn, you know, so I wasn't able to go to Final Fours. I wasn't able to be around coaching clinics. And so they had this coaches Zoom and it was probably, you know, I would say anywhere from 50 to 60 guys from around the, co the country, all divisions. And we were on these Zooms. And I remember one time we had to go through a mock interview and, you know, they picked me to do it. And, and I went through the interview, you know, I was just being myself tell him about my yeah. program, how I was going to be. And I remember Coach G called me offline after and was like, man, I don't know what you think, but you're going to be a head coach soon. And I was like, well, <laughs> dude, I got to learn. You know, I had just talked to, to Chris Mack before I took the job at, at Winthrop about being a GA, you know, going to get my master's. How can I learn, you know, bottom up, let me sweep the floors and, you know, do whatever I have to do because I understand hard work you know, and consistency and discipline, that's, you know, the end result is the end result. So, you know, I was blessed enough to skip some of those steps, but also understanding the sense of humility that comes with it and the responsibility. I think, you know, it's wild because I was at Winthrop and we won. Kelsey went to College of Charleston. I was the interim head coach for, you know, a while. I interviewed for the job. I didn't get it. Mark Prosser left Western and came to, to, uh, to, to Winthrop. I left Winthrop and went to College of Charleston. I was there maybe three days and then I get a, a call from a search firm. I didn't have an agent and I didn't know how it worked. I was, you know, so green and wet behind the ear, so to speak. Um, and everything <laughs> was flying, you know, and and then, you know, I do the interview process with, with, with Alex and, you know, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I got two and three Zooms. I'm like, yeah, I guess it's going okay. You know, I, I don't know. I've never done it before, but I was doing it for the experience, you know, and um, I could just remember me and my wife were sitting in a house in Charleston with a realtor, you know, and we about to, you know, say, yeah, this is the one we want to go with. And I get a call from the search firm like, hey, uh, how fast can you be in colorway? And I was like, well, I don't know. I mean, probably take me five, six hours <laughs> to get there. <laughs> you know, I had no idea. Uh, he was like, no, 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 not today, you know, but, you know, they want they want you to come up and you know, see campus. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I have, I, I just moved my whole family. We living in a hotel in, in Charleston. He's like, well, I was like, do I leave them? Do I bring them? And he was like, well, you only coach they're offering you know, to come up. So I would bring them, you know, and, and the rest is history. So um, again, you know, understanding that that's not always the track that everybody goes on along and understanding the blessings that's in that and a lot plays into it. But 
you know, once I interviewed, I just told Alex, I was simple. I was like, man, this is your first time being an AD. Like, what, what would you say, you know, if you felt like you could do the job and, you, you know, so it's like trying to get them to have that nostalgic feeling. And then I also said, man, listen, uh, it's like having a driver's license. When you first get your license, man, 10 and 2. You, 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 ain't, you ain't doing nothing. You ain't, the radio might be off and you're riding. You get a couple months in it, you turn up the tunes, you kick it back a little bit, right? You know, about a year in, you got your shorty sitting next to you. You all the way back hand on the thigh ride, right? So I said, man, it can't be anything different, you know? So, you know, you, with everything is experience, you have to be able to understand, you know, what you want, but also be able to say, I can learn anything. So that's how I approach it day in and day out. It doesn't have to be my idea, but by gosh, it has to be the right one. Michael Burrard, Managing Director Investments with the Founders Group at Stiefel, works with a select group of high net worth individuals and institutions to develop and implement investment plans tailored to their specific objectives and risk tolerances. If you are interested in highly personalized, well-researched guidance and outstanding personal service, you can contact Michael at 984 364 2002. That's 984 364 2002. Stiefel Nicholas and Company Incorporated, member SIPC and NYSE. Justin Gray is joining us on the David Glenn Show. So, for those who can't picture the geography, Coach Gray grew up in the Charlotte area. Cullowee's, I, I would guess, a three hour drive maybe from the mm -hmm. Charlotte area. My question is, Coach, I've lived in this state for 37 years, and I've only been to Cullowee half a dozen times. Mm -hmm. So as a North Carolina native, how often had you been to Cullowee prior to taking your family there? Oh, it was the first time that I had. <laughs> you know, it was the first time I had drove through Silver and Dillsboro and, you know, Waynesville and, you know, um, you know. I, I had heard Asheville. Obviously, I've been to Asheville before. Yeah. You know, I had heard of Knoxville, and people was like, yeah, it's sort of in the between there. And I was like, all right, you know. But it's a special place, you know. And, and when you think of a, a place being special, why? Yes, the mountains are beautiful and all those things, but it's the people. And, like, that's that's what I've always, you know, it's, the party is going to be with the people. We could be anywhere and have a great time, you know. But, if the, you know, they want to be really good, and they buy into it, and, uh, we've had the support that we've needed to, you know, to to push it to this point, and we still have to, you know, a lot of work to be able to continue to do it. But I was like, man, why not, man? Why 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 couldn't we have this team be talked about? Why why couldn't we be on national, t you know, TV playing, you know, college basketball? And, and that's that's a testament again to a lot of work, a lot of other people um, that have believed in us, um, and in the players, man. Let's let's be honest, man. It is the player. It is a player's game. It's about getting the right ones. Now, you got to do some convincing too to get them to color, you know, to color we. And yeah. um, we, we were able to come up with a really good game plan and understanding that Justin Gray, the brand in North Carolina, sold and the, the name rings, right? So, how could we get that to flip to say Western Carolina and it rings? And that's that's yeah. what we've been doing and trying to have the, 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 the challenge to be able to do. It's a great story. I encourage folks to check it out. Coach Gray has guys from Georgia, from South Carolina, from North Carolina, from Virginia, from Mississippi. If you just kind of picture, I know you have guys from elsewhere as well, but a whole bunch from within like that, I don't know, six or seven hour driving radius where maybe their parents can, and friends can come see them play from time to time. Uh, it is a great story. Learn more about it. They are on the verge of the all-time school record for wins as a Division I program. You're going to, I know, turn 40 soon, but for me and others like others that have seen you play, to me, you look like a young guy to this moment, Coach. Do you still have some game? Like, do Vontarius Woolbright and the other dudes, have they seen Coach Gray's game? Do you pull it yeah. out occasionally? You know what? I always tell them I'm the best shooter in every gym that I go into. Like, not even, <laughs> not even a question. If you want me to stand in a spot and make a shot, I like my chances. You know, I barely played defense in college. I ain't playing no defense right now. I can tell you that. So uh, I, I let the players be players, and I let them go Google and watch highlights about what I've done. You know, so the more the more hard thing is the 
get my six-year-old think I'm a player. You know, I used to play. He thinks my oldest son is the best player ever, you know. So uh, <laughs> I'm not the best player in my house, let alone. <laughs> in, in <the> West <laughs> that is great. Hey, uh, your buddy, Chris Paul, I don't know the nature of your relationship since you were teammates, mm -hmm. but he's, you know, like a 12-time NBA All-Star. I think he's coming up maybe on his 39th birthday now with the Golden State Warriors. What has that relationship we 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 all loved your relationship as basketball players what has yeah. it been like as human beings over these last uh what uh 18 years since you were together yeah i mean i think you know as life happens you know families get involved and kids and you know we've done a pretty good job in my opinion like when we when we see each other it's like we we were walking across the quad at, at wake you know we sort of pick up cool. what we left off um you know we have uh both our boys are what five months apart you know i literally just got a text message about my son playing on his aau program uh playing with his aau program you know so the time for that you know i was in his wedding you know so i mean oh, cool. we've been around man and, and life happens but you know just to see how much success he's had and you know any of my teammates in any walk of life you know we want them all to be successful and it was a real true brotherhood and it still is, you know, if he called me today and needed something, I'm going to drop it and see what I could do to help him. And I know it'd be the same um, if I if I called him. You mentioned Coach Prosser. Quick story. The closest I have ever come to crying on the air in my 37 year media career was when I had to announce the tragic news that he had passed away in the middle of the offseason at a very young age. And I got not to I didn't get to know him, obviously, the way you did. But I, I felt like I knew him fairly well, and he shared a lot of personal things. And I just found him to be an amazing, wonderful human being, which is no shock to you, I know. Uh, you mentioned him earlier, but whether it's as a young man, as a player, or as a future coach, what are some of those most important things you learned from the late legend Skip Prosser? Yeah, I think, um, you know, one of the things I said it early was never delaying gratitude. You hear, you hear me talking yeah. about gratitude. He was... That was one of his more famous quotes or skipisms, as we would like to like to call them as his former yeah. players. But the thing that I took away the most and what I try to incorporate in my program is when I would go talk to him or I would go by the office, we didn't talk about basketball, you know, and it was like, what else is going on? What's tell me about your grandma? How's she doing? You know, tell me about class, you know, and, you know, it was the little the little things he'd do. I can remember walking across campus and he had, you know, he had the nice Mercedes and it was champagne color and, you know, right, nice sunny spring day. And he, he'd drive across and stop and roll down the window and be like, hey, Jay Gray, you heard that new 50 cent? And he'd turn the sound <laughs> up on it and just bounce, you know, and roll off. It was just like <laughs> he was, it was so personable and everybody around campus and, and throughout the department that he, he knew their names. He, he looked them in the eye and, you know, so one thing I always said, you know, and it's my mission statement in coaching is being able to like run a program that has real impact. Number one, like you got to be yeah. able to impact the people that you're around and then have lifelong relationships. You know, he used to always say it's not a four year deal. It's a 40 year deal. You know, so yeah. you incorporate that. And then the faith piece, you know, understanding like our job is to be able to build faith in these in these young men. And it doesn't have to mean religion. Like when I think of faith, I think of something I see, but I can't touch it. So that could be their confidence, yeah. giving it to them and seeing what you what's in there. How to, my job to be able to get it out, and so those are the things that I you know I took away from them. I try to sort of sprinkle and season my program with, um, but I can tell you, man, those skipisms and people at Wake and when his name is rung and, and and spoke about, they know how special he was, man. You know, and and, yeah. and it's different from being an assistant coach, even if it was two years, to now being a head coach. The players just don't come in my office like they used to, you know, as an assistant. You yeah. know, for us as, as as players to be able to just knock on the door and walk in and go have a conversation with them, you know, that's something that I'm really, really passionate about and in, in having in my program. Justin Gray, he's in year three with the Catamounts, and it has been an amazing journey. They as they head to the Southern Conference tournament, 22 wins, chance to set the record in the Catamounts time as a Division One program. If they can win even one more, they'll have the record. Part of your new program and your time as a head coach, you've had some really cool acronyms 
and I know you adopted a new one this year, EDGE, E-D-G-E. Remind us what each of those letters represents and why those four things are, are purposeful for you. Yeah, I think, you know, every team has some kind of type of core values or something that they, they laid a hat on. Um, when we first got here, we took the, the principal. It was the acronym that we had when we was at Wake my freshman year. It was TJDK. They just don't know, right? And it was something that we were really passionate about, letting people know, like, who Western Carolina basketball, what it was going to be like, what they could expect, what kind of student athletes, what kind of people in the community we would have. And I think we sort of – we've done that and we've evolved now to the edge, you know, and I think the first E, I always talk about the right kind of energy. Like we'll need energy vampires. We don't want people coming in the room and they sucking the energy out. No, we want to give people energy. And you see that when we play the high fives, the, the chest bumps, the flexes, the emotion that we play with. Emote. That's who I was as a player. They always say you want your team to be who you are. Have a little bit of you. So energy is that first one. I think um, when we think about the D is discipline. When you think of anything that's great or anything that you have to accomplish, uh, it requires discipline. You know, and understanding one is discipline to the game plan, but it's also dis discipline to the approach and the things that you said you want to accomplish as a student athlete. So we hold them across the board and making sure that discipline in every area. The G is grit. You know, you, you got to have a little dog in you. You got to have a little chip on your shoulder all the time. You got to be gritty and want to compete. And I tell my, I, you know, I, it was a famous quote I had up here. I was like, you know, people heard me say it on the radio one time. We ain't playing table tennis. This isn't a this isn't a yeah. distant no. This is a physical sport. So let's play it that way, right? And so we we want a little bit of grit, a little bit of griminess to us um, when we when we go out there and compete. And then I just said, if you do those things and we, we we're about the right things, it'll end on the last E, which is excellence. We shoot for perfection. We'll end on excellence. And we sort of broke down our last four weeks of the season on each one of those energy and discipline and grit. And now I said, boy, this is the week of excellence. The way we prepare, we have to be excellent. The way that we compete this weekend has to be excellent. And uh, when those things happen, we'll be one of the more better teams in not only uh, uh, our country, our conference, obviously, but in the school's history. One of the fascinating parts of your story, Coach, is that eight of your top nine guys are transfers. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if, you know, five years ago or 20 years ago or 50 years ago, it would have been possible to build a team the way you have built this team because we didn't have the transfer portal and we didn't have immediate eligibility for transfers. Yeah. So how have you and your staff turned – this is a relatively new world. You became a head coach at around the same time the world was dramatically changing in college sports. How yeah. have you all turned this new world into this success story because – my understanding of recruiting transfers is, man, you got to try to get to know them in an incredibly compressed time period. It's not like mm -hmm. recruiting the kid from his sophomore year of high school and talking to his principal and the janitor and the assistant coach and his teacher and his mom and his dad, man. It just sounds like a crazy world and you're making it work. Well, I mean, truthfully, it's the only world that I've known in coaching, right? As, yeah. a, as a player, you know, you could you could not know a, a kid's name number one you know and then the next year is like oh that's gray number one oh and then the next year is like oh that's jay gray you know it was like you grew up with with the with the players with the continuity um now the one thing you have to make sure you do because i i let players know all the time talented guys that haven't come here my program isn't for everyone it's not you know the, the culture is the number one thing that we all talk about the number one thing if, if winning doesn't come before everything else, now we got NIL and guys going to the league and all those things, but winning is the number one thing. If, if We'll eliminate it right there, you know, and that's okay. I've hung up on really good players, right? And they've went on to have really good careers at other universities, but I always say the right kid will be attracted to what we have. It's like, do we believe in what we have? How do we teach it? And can we do it with consistency and discipline? You know, and in this world of transfer portal, the standard is the minimum. You know, it's not like let's get to the standard. No, don't fall below that. That That is the bare minimum is the standard. And the discipline helps the the ability to to an uh, area that I've grown in is conflict. Uh, also being able to have staff members that understand conflict is necessary. And, you know, I always say 
my kids don't always have to like me, but they'll respect me. And at the end of the day, they'll love me. And, and, and that's how we sort of approach it. Um, but you have to have people that, you know, you know, you got to have champions that are out there that sort of can, you know, be on the ground. You know, it's not like we hopping on the PJ and flying out after the game to go see a kid. Right. Uh, you got to have people that you trust. Yeah. And I think one thing that Skip has always taught me, and, and I've had this as a young kid, was don't let the game of basketball use you. Use the game of basketball. So it's the relationships. Right. It goes back to that piece and having people, you know, call. Hey, Dave, man, tell me about this kid down there, man. What you know, what you think? You know, and having people that yeah. you really trust in, in 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 doing so, because once it gets to to my table and my plate, I'm like, all right, we're going in. And 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 when you're talking about getting a kid, you got to be relentless and you know understanding. I think also in recruiting the portal, you know, the success that I've had, you know, as a professional athlete, and, you know, playing for yeah. so long, and those things sort of you know resonate with the kid as well. And understand, I know what it takes to get there. You know, and everybody wants to be a pro. Until you got to do what a pro has to do, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, um, just being honest with them. But the number one thing is winning. If you want to win, you want to do what it takes to win. I mean, you know, we 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 definitely definitely put that at a high high um, position on in recruiting for us. Justin Gray is with us. His Catamounts have gone from eleven wins, the program he inherited, to twenty two wins and counting this year as they head to the Southern Conference tournament. Uh, you you made me laugh earlier when you said you didn't play much defense at Wake Forest. One of the cool things about this year's Western Carolina team is at least according to the efficiency metrics, you guys are the number one defensive team in the Southern Conference. And you were not that in your first or second year. Mm -hmm. What 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 does great defense require? And and what has this group bought into so that you're truly leading the way among conference members? Yeah, I think we, you know, uh, Ryan Lightfoot, who's I, I, I have an offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. Ryan is our defensive coordinator. I mean, he was a head coach before. I mean, excellent X and O's, understands the game, how to teach it. And we just sat down and said, man, what is it going to take to win our league? You know, and, and, I think you can have an idea of what you want to do and how you want to play, but then the game will tell you, all right, this is what the numbers are saying. And I was a guy, I'm, I want to see you play. I want to, you know, I was an eyes guy. Ryan is a numbers guy. And we just came up with a system that said, you know, our league is a three point shooting league. Like it, it's no secret about it. At that time, I think we had six teams that were in the top 12 and three point percent rated like each game. How many rate rate of threes did they take every game? Um, and for us, it was like, let's come up with a system that sort of builds around that. And so I think when you think of a really good defensive team, you have non-negotiables, you know, it's like anything you have in a company, you have to really be able to hold them to that standard, you know? So we talk about no catch and shoot threes, no middle, no second chance points, you know? And then we talk about the physicality that you have to play with the game of basketball. Again, is a contact sport. When I played, I didn't like guys all up on me, up underneath me, bumping me. And, you know, I'm looking at the refs and fouls, but I've also played against Duke, right? And you go in Cameron yeah. and you go in Cameron and everybody's fouling and then call one foul, mm -hmm. right? Because guess what? That was the standard of the program. They set yeah. the rules to the game. So um, th that's how we play. We, we want to be physical. We want to guard the three. Uh, we want guys to feel uncomfortable. And then we want to try to be disciplined you know, within doing that. And then the refs sort of set the game, you know, whatever, however they call in the game, that's how we'll adjust. But we want to be able to try to set the rules early and play our brand of basketball. I am a better person and a more effective business owner for having known and learned from Emily Parks over many years now. Emily's company, Organize for Success, helps multi-passionate business owners and executives bring harmony to all the layers of their lives, from work to side projects, from friends and family to hobbies, community, and beyond. With Emily's help, you too can make every minute matter. She helps you determine what earns your time and how to efficiently accomplish what matters. One of the many things I love about Emily is that she does not impose her will on her clients. She listens to them. That way she can better help them cultivate the lives they want to live. You can set up a complimentary call with Emily today by visiting OrganizeForSuccess.com. 
That's organize, F-O-R, success.com. You tell me when you're out of time. I only have a couple more things to go here. Um, Western Western Carolina has only been to the NCAA Division I tournament one time in its history, and it was in the 90s before your guys were even – your current players were, were even born. Is that just like a historical footnote for people on the outside to mention occasionally, or, or is there something in that? that you can use as a rallying cry. Hey, like we just won as many games as anybody ever at this school. So let's break that. You know, let's, let's do something else that's different too. Is it something mm -hmm. you talk about? Yeah. I think, you know, it, it go back to recruiting, you know, that's something that we sort of recruited towards and we say the right kind of guys will be attracted and want to do something special. You know, it's the guys yeah. that are overlooked, right? It's the guys that have a chip on their shoulder. And it's really, really good and easy to rally around trying to do something really special. And I think it was our team. You know, we gave them that that mantra, but our team really bought into that. And I got the picture of the 96 team on the front of my office. I see it every single day, you know, and, cool. and on my door and being able to. Those are the things that just reminded them, you know, when was the last time we've done something special and, and how special it is that we're going because Every kid these days, they want to they want to pat on the back. You know why? Because they're on social media and they're double clicking for likes and showing the t shirt yeah. and the shoes they have on. And so it's part of our guy our job to sort of stroke the ego a little bit, pat on the back, but also keep them and give them a sense of reality, understanding why why we're having that success. I want you to help. We get, we do this statewide all North Carolina team. So mm -hmm. you you would have been on it back in the day as a player. Yeah. But your guy, Vontarius Woolbright, Coach, I don't even know how to describe him to people who haven't seen him play. I don't even know if you call him a point guard or not. But for mm -hmm. those who haven't seen him, and then I'll just let you kind of carry the ball, the guy is 6'6", 215, and he leads the team in assists. But he also leads the league in scoring. He leads the league in rebounding, and he's darn close to leading the league in assists. Those three things do not happen in the same human being very often, Coach, especially not at 6'6", 215. Like, yeah. where to find this guy? <laughs> and yeah. how do you describe him to somebody who hasn't seen him play? Well, it was, it was you know, in the first year, um, you know, we're trying to put a roster together via Zoom. And, you know, it was COVID. Nobody could come to campus. And yeah. uh, I can remember seeing his film. And I was just coming from, from Winthrop and – I just like big guards, you know, it's like, how can you create matchups? And, you know, so I'm like, go see who leading the country in assists, you know, who, what what guard is rebounding. And, you know, he, we, we look and it's, you know, a kid in Juco. And I'm like, man, this kid can play. Like he, he he's making the right reads. He's, you know, he's aggressive, decent athlete. Um, Like see what's up with him. He got to have it offers from everywhere, you know, and then we call and, you know, Coach Friesman calls and it's like not a lot of traction. And I'm like, oh, we might have one, you know, and every time we called him, he was always in the gym. I mean, every time I called the kid, I'm like, hey, V, you know, good morning, man. How you doing? Uh, nothing, Coach, just in the gym. You can hear the ball bouncing. And I'm like, dude, every nice. time, like, when do you do some homework? You know, that was like, when, <laughs> when, when do you get transcript? You know, and it's like <laughs> you get those kind of guys, man, that are just special. And, you know, you 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 know about it because you cover sports and there's not a lot of guys that's doing everything. There's just not. Yeah. You know, if you look in the NBA, it's just not. It's a lot of specialists. So, you know, when, when I'm talking to NBA teams and scouts, I'm like, listen, you tell me how many guys that you have right now have, have done what he's done in college. Not a lot of them, you know. Yeah. And, at the end of the day, it's a player's game. You want to be able to put players in the position for them to be able to make plays. And he's a he's a dog, man. He competes. He uh, he's a gym rat. He's always in the gym. You know, he's always going to be working. Um, and then he's a competitor. You know, I think one thing that gets under under um, estimated is his IQ, like his feel for the game and his adjustments. And he'll come over and be like, "Nah, coach, we need to do X, Y, and Z." And we do it, and the guy's wide open, you know, like doesn't always end in the made shot, but it's like, no, we need to right. trust the guy, you know. So having a really good relationship with him, it's been it's been awesome, man. And just to see how hard he's worked to be able to be successful on the court is you know, it's a testament. You always tell guys, work as hard as you can and the results will come. You know, 
he's a testament to that and we'll have something to show show from that I encourage folks as we get coach out of here with our lightning round I encourage folks to check out the catamount story it is a great story collectively there are some phenomenal stories even beyond Vontarius uh, individually uh, and I haven't seen all the I don't think your conference awards have all come out yet but I don't know how he couldn't be the, the Southern yes, Conference won. player of the year I mean it right if he doesn't win it man um, if he doesn't win it, <laughs> you know, I've seen some wilder things happening in politics. There, true, right? man. True, if he doesn't win it, it. It'll be a robbery. The original Salt Works has become a legendary breakfast, brunch, and lunch place in Wilmington for both locals and out-of-town visitors over the last fifty-plus years. Our good friend Bob Hubbard owns the place, but he's also the one cooking your food and often roaming the dining room to greet you with a smile and to make sure your visit is a great one. Bob has been running the show at this unique roadside diner for more than 20 years now, and he and his friendly, hardworking staff aim to treat you like one of their own. Try Bob's homemade omelets or special recipe grits for breakfast or his legendary cheeseburgers for lunch. The original Salt Works, your breakfast and lunch choice on Oleander Drive in Wilmington. I forget the timetable. Some conferences have already announced that stuff, but I, I don't think your conference has. So our lightning round, Coach, it's just to designed to get to know you as a person a little bit better. These can be one-word answers or one-sentence answers, whatever. Uh, we brag in North Carolina that we have great beach houses and great lake houses and great mountain houses. There aren't a lot of states that have all three of those. What would the Gray family, what would your pecking order be? Beach house, lake house, mountain house. Woof. Uh, I'm not the boss in my house, so I'm gonna say beach house. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then I would say mountain house, and then I would say lake house afterwards. Okay. Besides basketball, what sport do you follow most closely? Man, I would say football. I am a um, avid Carolina Panthers fan. I am a Charlotte tier, so Carolina cool. Panthers, Charlotte Hornets. You know, I. I'm going to go through the, the, the down years for, for that one year that we can get it rolling. My interview has been running so long, I didn't even get to ask you about your 12 years overseas. But one question we ask everybody is, your all-time favorite trip outside the United States. Man, you played mm. in 13 countries in 12 years. That's yeah. just crazy to me. Yeah, man. Basketball has been really, <laughs> really good to me. Um, again, um, my wife's not gonna watch this, so I can I can probably tell the truth. <laughs> and not she's from Belarus, so I have to give oh, okay. to Belarus a shout out. But I think my time in Greece was was awesome just because the brand of basketball, um, they really loved it. And it was a beautiful place. I mean, I was in Thessaloniki, you know, it's right there in the water, got the mountains in the background. You couldn't couldn't be a better place. But I've been a ton of a ton of good places. Dubai. You know, you think about going to Dubai, yeah. it's like, what in the world? They made this, you know. So, um, no, I've been I've been really, really blessed. Can I ask how you met your wife? Was it part of yeah. your playing career overseas? Yeah, I was doing my playing career there. Uh, I played in Minsk for a total of four and a half years. Um, so it was through, through my playing career we met there. Um, uh, I, I told her I was a horse jockey which I know she she doesn't like. I mean, she loves me. She don't really like sports. You know what I mean? So when I come home, it's awesome. She's not asking about the game. She ain't asking about the play. She ain't asking about nothing. She's like, are you hungry? You know, you know watch a movie, you know, and I always get in trouble because I go to sleep. <laughs> that is movies. funny, man. As <laughs> but, a sports media guy, I also married somebody who mostly doesn't care. There's mm -hmm. a couple of exceptions, but I kind of like the break from being surrounded by sports at all times. Yeah. Um, how about a few of your favorite bands or musicians? I'm a Jay-Z guy. Um, uh, just, you know, I would probably say as of late, I, you know, outside of Jay-Z, I like Usher. I like Kurt Franklin. You know, I'm, I, I like gospel music. I like r and I'm pretty open. Um, I done got into a little bit of country here. Who is it? Uh, Wallen? Mark Wallen? No. Uh, man, I was just listening to the song earlier today. I can't even, I can't even think of the guy's name. Hold on, let me, because it's gonna drive me nuts. I'm that guy. I need to. Morgan right. Wallen. Morgan Wallen. 
Somebody oh, put yeah, me on yeah. Morgan yeah. Wallen. I'm like, oh, I like this. So, you know, I'm I'm pretty sure. open. I'm pretty flexible with my with my tunes. You don't have to hit all of these, but if there is a favorite actor or actress or author or artist, any yeah. of those come to mind? Uh, when I think of author, um, something I do, I've had this book. It's literally open on my desk for it's beat up. Uh, it's a Tony yeah. Bungie daily daily challenge. It's a cool. devotional. I gave every player on our team one of these. You know, I've gave people in administration. It's just something that's been. You know, I probably had it seven plus years and, and you know, you can connect with people through that. Um, so I, I would have to give, you know, even though he's a coach and athlete, you know, I really, really do. I really do like his his devotional um, actor is easy for me. Um, well, Denzel Washington is probably yeah. one, of my, one of my favorite all time favorites. Um, that might be the number one answer we get, coach. Yeah. Yeah, I, I grew up on all that. John Q. Me and my wife watched John Q. again for the like hundredth time. <laughs> that's one of the ones a tearjerker for me. And our our last question for you, our title sponsor here at the David Glenn Show is the North Carolina Pork Council. Mm-hmm. So, heck, as a North Carolinian, you know the difference between Eastern style barbecue and what and Lexington style barbecue, and probably even South Carolina style barbecue. Do you have a favorite pork product, bacon, or any barbecue or anything else? Listen, man, for for a lot of my playing career, I had a very, very strict diet. I found out that uh, being a pescatarian was the best route, so I did it, and I was disciplined to it. But as soon as I finished, (laughs) as as soon as I finished my career, I had to go get me a country ham biscuit from Bojangles. (laughs) 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 The barbecue, man, I'm, I'm, you know, I've had it all, you know what I mean? I love food, um, but I'm telling you right now, ain't nothing like a good morning country ham biscuit from from Bo Hanglis. I'm I'm down for it all the time. <laughs> well said. Uh, you were a lot of fun to cover as a player, Coach, uh, and I'm just celebrating this story that you have going with the Catamounts. So I appreciate you kind of carving out an extended visit here. Uh, we're thrilled to get to know you a little bit better. We'll be rooting for you the rest of the way. Good luck at the Southern Conference Tournament. And really, no matter what happens moving forward, congratulations. I mean, this is truly, I hope folks understand, this is one of the best basketball teams in the history of Western Carolina University, no matter how the story ends. Uh, And I hope it ends beautifully. But uh, congrats on this three-year turnaround. And uh, congrats to your guys as well. You've been a fun story to watch. Thank you, Dave, man. I've I've watched the show. You know, it's a pleasure to truly be on it. And look forward to being back at some point. Thank you, my friend. Take care of that beautiful family of yours. Coach is the father of three, the last I checked, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and now, in a different way, the father of a bunch of young men in, in the locker room that's kicking tail and taking names. Uh, good luck in Asheville. Thanks to the folks across North Carolina for joining Coach Gray and me today on the David Glenn Show and on the North Carolina Sports Network.